Hello everybody. Welcome to Ophthalmology Mastery, Clinical Skills for MBBS Students. So in this video, we'll learn about examination of a case of corneal opacity. A corneal opacity can be kept for your exams as, a, as one of the case and you have to um, know how to examine and what is the history you would take and what how to present the findings and what would be the management of a case of corneal opacity. Right. So the history, first you would uh, start with the patient usually present with diminution of vision since few days or few months. Okay. So that would be the chief complaint. HOPI, obviously corneal opacities do not happen uh, by themselves. There has to be a, a preceding event and usually most often it is a trauma leading to a corneal ulcer and then leading to corneal opacity. So you need to know the cause and only then you can find it tell the presentation so usually the patient you will present as patient was apparently well few days ago when he or she had an injury to right eye with a stick patient had consulted an ophthalmologist and was prescribed drops for the same patient had redness pain and watering for one to two months so probably patient had an ulcer after use of drops pain and redness came down but patient continued to have blurred vision the blurred vision has remained the same since then with no improvement or further diminution of vision. This is usually com usual complaint of the patient. The patient has noticed a whitest discoloration of the black of the eyes since then. This is how they will present with. You might have to ask the ophthalmic history, any history of wearing spectacles, history of any surgery. During the episode of trauma, did they have any surgery? If the patient has undergone any surgery, please mention it here such as debridement or corneal transplantation or suturing. If it was a trauma, penetrating trauma and they underwent suturing, you have to mention that here. Okay. And then coming to examination. Obviously, you will have to do uh, all the examination, systemic examination and all the uh, ocular examination. But I will be only be telling about the salient features here. Visual acuity, you have to measure the distant visual acuity and pinhole. So what is the maximum improvement that the patient will may have, right? So if vision is only HM uh, hand movements positive, please mention perception of light and projection of rays because that is an indication of the uh, visual prognosis that the patient might have despite the con uh, after treating corneal opacity. In the cornea, you will complete the examination of ocular posture, head posture, ocular posture. Um, then you'll go on to lid, lacrimal apertures and mention about the after conjunctiva, you will mention about the cornea. In cornea, you will mention about the no, uh, examination of the cornea, the size, shape, surface, sensations and then coming to the uh, transparency, you will now mention, uh, describe the opacity. The opacity will be described as first in the size so you will mention the vertical and the horizontal measurements you will use a transparent scale measure the longest dimension in millimeter and the uh, uh, dimensions across are perpendicular to it also you'll measure and you'll mention the uh, size location whether it is central and involving the pupillary area whether it is peripheral, closer to the limbus or paracentral between the central and the peripheral cornea. The density, how will you, so whether it's a nebula, grade, macula, leucoma or adient leucoma. So now we'll see what you mean, what do we mean by nebula, macula and leucoma. So uh, these are the grades or the types of corneal opacity. Just grade 1 is nebula, macula is grade 2. Leucoma is grade 3 and a fourth one is adient leucoma. Now coming to if the opacity as you see here right is involves only one third of the anterior cornea we call it as nebular grade opacity but on examination if you see through the opacity I am seeing opacity but through the opacity I can see the iris details and also the pupillary margin only then you will call this as a nebular grade corneal opacity okay so what if it is a macular grade now this if if the opacity involves half to one third to half of the thickness of the cornea 
then we call it as macular grade opacity this you will identify only on slit lamp but on torch light if you see through the corneal opacity if you you are not able to make out the iris details but you can see the pupillary margin then we call it as macular grade corneal opacity something like this you cannot see the iris details but pupillary margin can be seen here right then if the in, uh, opacity involves the full thickness of the stroma then it is called as a leucomatous grade opacity so here on torch light on slit lamp you will be able to identify full thickness stroma but on torch light how will it appear it will appear as a whitish opacity and when you see through the opacity you can neither see the iris details nor the pupillary margin it's very important to remember this then you will call it as leucomatous grade opacity where you don't see any iris details through when you see the corneal opacity right so sometimes the iris is adherent to the leucoma leucomatous corneal opacity iris is pulled through into and attached to the leucomatous grade corneal opacity then you will call again it is leucomatous you will not see any iris details or pupillary um, or the pupillary margin but you will see that the iris is pulled towards the corn pupil is distorted and iris pulled towards the corneal opacity we call it as adherent leucoma or grade 4 corneal opacity the some of the books mention this anterostrophilum as a grade 5 uh, here it is an ectatic if you see here it's an ectatic pseudoconia with iris tissue incarceration with in it okay this is grade 5 for anterior stephanum now we will have to mention the further examination anterior chamber if you see it it can be the normal depth or irregular depth in case of adherent leucoma it is shallow in certain areas and it is deeper in certain areas right so you have to mention it is irregular depth iris pupil and lens only if you see it you will mention it if you don't see it you will say i cannot comment because i'm not able to see the rest of the details i can see the corneal opacity but i cannot see the contents behind it so i cannot comment about it you can say that and safe you can say that safely right common questions here asked is if you're not seeing the pupil how do you assess the optic nerve function if you cannot see the pupil that's a quite a common question asked and you will say your answer should be by indirect pupillary reflex so we throw light on this affected eye and look for the pupillary reflex in the opposite side if that is brisk then you know this optic nerve is functioning well that's a very good assessment of the optic nerve function how do you assess the retina if you're not able to see the retina because of the corneal opacity how do you assess if it's functioning or it is intact you know then you will say the answer should be b scan ultrasonography right now the diagnosis when after you see all the, describe all the findings finally you should tell the diagnosis as i which right or left location of the corneal opacity central paracentral or peripheral and grade of opacity nebula macula leucoma or adherent leucoma so for uh, finally your diagnosis will be right eye central nebula grade corneal opacity you can mention the size if it is you know, if you're very sure for five by five millimeter in size okay so what would be the management the you will have to do investigations like slit lamp examination to finally identify the correct um, the, uh, uh, structures and identify what is happening behind the opacity you will have to do a b-scan ultrasonography to assess the retina and to if the retina is functioning well so to know b-scan ultrasonography is only to assess the anatomy of the retina whereas macula function test the function the function uh, test the function of the retina to prognosticate after you treat whether the patient's vision will improve or not you'll have to do macula function test macula function test will uh, we have seen it in another uh, video so finally the management would be if it is a central nebular grade corneal opacity probably treatment is phototherapeutic keratectomy please remember a central nebular grade corneal opacity is much more disturbing to the patient because it causes uh, diffraction of light compared to a central leucomatous grade corneal opacity right macular grade or leucomatous grade corneal opacity in the center treatment would be keratoplasty okay peripheral corneal opacities uh, you can either do uh, uh, rigid gas permeable lenses or if it's a very dense one probably a patch grafting can be done if there's no visual prognosis okay 
you will probably do on the so PL negative eye as but the patient wants to get rid of the corneal opacity for cosmetic for reasons then you will do corneal tattooing so treatment would be phototherapeutic keratectomy keratoplasty patch grafting rigid gas permeable lenses if it's peripheral corneal opacities and to, to improve vision and final one is can corneal tattooing where there's no visual prognosis and only for cosmetic purposes okay so if it's a nebula weird opacity like this you can do photo therapeutic characterectomy and remove the corneal opacity if it's a macular weird opacity or leukomatous weird opacity the only treatment would be a keratoplasty um, if it is a, a pl negative eye like in this patient we can do corneal tattooing and improve the cosmetic appearance right so again if it's a macular what type of keratoplasty might also be asked if it's a macular grade only involving half of the cornea you will do only an anterior lamellar keratoplasty you will not do full thickness keratoplasty but if it's a leukomatous grade corneal opacity you will do a penetrating keratoplasty so these are the most common questions asked in a case of corneal opacity and you have to the, if you answer all these things the next questions might be on keratoplasty you'll have to know little bit on keratoplasty thank you very much